Hi, welcome to Teluvena Radio. My name is Vilas. Uh, today, I'm show running from New Jersey. Uh, we have a guest, uh, uh, Vastu Astrology with uh, Dr. Deepika Sanghi Gupta Ji. Uh, she is a Vastu consultant and Vedic astrologer. Uh, she is a PhD in Vedic astrology and she, is, she has a website, ohmhhh.com. So, we'll go with the more Vastu details and uh, what is Vastu, what is the more details we can check with uh, Deepika ji. Uh, welcome to uh, Theruvayana Radio, Deepika ji. How are you? Uh, I'm good, Vilas ji. Thank you for bringing up to this show and giving me the opportunity to share my knowledge. I'm very thankful to you and Telugu NRI Radio. Yeah. Uh, before uh, introducing going to the show, uh, I will uh, repeat the, my uh, caller numbers. So, India listeners, 970-522-2005. The USA listeners 919-701-2005 and the UK listeners 115-888-2005. Otherwise, you can also reach me in Telugu NRA radio via Skype ID or you can call me on WhatsApp 970-522-2005. Let's uh, go with uh, Deepika ji. Uh, Deepika ji, how was uh, New Jersey and how are you? I am good. Uh, New Jersey is also good, doing good. Today the weather is much better. Uh, so, enjoying the weekend and the good weather. Very nice. So, good, good. Thank you. And uh, it's a privilege to do interview with you, uh, Deepika ji. Uh, really, really good information. We know uh, in New Jersey, you are doing wonderful job and you are giving all the uh, uh, doubts, uh, clarifications about Vastu. So, how Vastu came to uh, into existence? So, can you please uh, give details to our Srotas? Yeah. See, Vastu actually was written in the Vedas and uh, it was like 8,000 years old when the Rishis, uh, they, uh, you know, uh, put this science into uh, like into the scriptures, the Asian scriptures. And it is kind of an architectural theory. It is the science uh, of the, you know, Asian India. And, uh, you know, many like uh, ancient uh, sages, they have written uh, the Vastu and they have given the different knowledge on the Vastu. So, uh, does uh, our ancient script, uh, just now you mentioned ancient scriptures. So, yeah. how about yeah. the Vastu is giving, uh, how long ago it is existence? How it many was like 8,000. Yeah, it was written oh. like 8,000 years back. Like which is, which is a huge time and you know like the uh, actually the sages they have you know told about each and every energy in the house or in the office at those times there was no office actually so uh, the actually the vastu was written only for the kings about the palaces and the king and how they can be benefited uh, through this science how can they live a prosperous and you know harmoniously so that when they will be happy, then they can definitely rule a good, you know, they can be a good rulers too. Correct. So, how many types of Vastu are there? Like Vastu, Gra, Shastra, we say many, many terms will be there. So, what exactly uh, terms we can indicate? How many types? See, Vastu is only one type. Uh, there are no types in the Vastu. Uh, it is uh, like there is only one. But actually, we have so many vocabulary attached to the Vastu Shastra because of, you know, uh, according to the place, uh, you know, like the when the place change, a little bit of language difference is there. So that's why in the India, you know, from north to the south, because of the place change slowly and slowly, you know, the words got mixed and the words got mixed into the local language. That is why we use many terms for this, but otherwise there is only one type of Vastu. Whether we call it Vastu Shastra, Grah Shastra, whether we called it Vastu as a science, so whatever, but it is just one thing. So what are the main secrets of Grah Vastu? I mean, uh, so there are many secrets they say, so how you can elaborate? See, the secrets are that, you know, uh, it is basically, as as I said, that it is the science about how we can create the positivity in the house. So there are a few secrets, like some of them are like, like the south and the west should always be elevated and the north and the east should always be down. But in today's world, see, we cannot put the rules as it is. Like, uh, let me explain this with an example. 
uh, like if we talk about astrology in earlier days there was no bmw or there was no uh, mercedes right it was right. like uh, if they have written if the sages have written that uh, it is like a, a horse will be there with this king or an elephant will be there because those were the modes of transportation in olden days but now if i say somebody that you keep a horse it is not like you know nobody can keep it right or if i say okay put as a uh, elephant as your transport mode then it is not possible so what today horses horses today is the sports car the racing cars and then what is elephant elephant is like big cars which have you know like uh, expensive cars because elephant is an expensive animal uh, so today in today's term we have to you know uh, transform what the sages have written and how they are applicable in this time this is i was talking about astrology now if i talk about vastu so in earlier days there was no you know restroom in the houses no washroom in the palaces i must say if you go to all the palaces any palace in india you won't find a single restroom right because even the kings used to go out of the palace so but today's world if i say this thing that okay don't make a restroom in the house it is not possible right so we have to see the zones where this excretion is also a positive thing where the person when excretes have the good health right because excretion is totally dependent on our good health right so we have to connect the terms that in today's world how we can use those asian sciences for our health wealth prosperity uh, because see in earlier days definitely uh, the people used to have more peaceful life they were more happier uh, they don't have today we have so many machines today the life is much easier but still people don't have that happiness right exactly that's true yeah you are you are relating to close to our lives that's true uh, so uh, i want to say one thing here so when it comes to vastu i mean especially in usa so most of the times you know uh, real estate uh, we, when we are buying the house we'll see the like north face and east face and this so uh, do we really think uh, is it work out the uh, north face and east face uh, could you please uh, explain yeah see this is also a big myth see uh, every direction has its own uh, you know frequency every direction has its own importance if only the north and the east faces houses have been good then why god has made two other directions south and west something is attached to south some importance is attached to south some importance is attached to west some is attached to north and some is attached to east you let me know the people who are living only in the north and the east facing houses are happy is it true no it's not yeah. does the people who live only in the north facing houses or the east facing houses does not face problems is it true no right okay. it's not true yeah. right so every direction has its own importance you know why it is said that the east and the north faces and houses are good because of the sunlight because you know uh, like we get lot of sunlight if it is a east facing house and then uh, when the uh, you know houses are east and the north facing then the bedrooms will definitely fall into the south southwest and west which is good okay. as the bedrooms location just this is the logic behind east and north facing houses otherwise the west is also good yeah in the south facing i'll say uh, there are few points which can be really tricky so the south facing uh, i will also say to avoid a little bit but yes west facing houses are equally good and this is a big myth that only the north facing houses and the east facing houses are good yeah uh, i mean yeah, this is a general question because most of the people when we are buying or when we are seeing the houses in community right so general yeah. topic that's why i bring up you uh, is a good answer uh, i got the answer from you uh, yeah so in present situation nowadays you know uh, due to covid right today's life yeah. is a miserable right so how mm-hmm. was the energies uh, can help in stress uh, anxiety depression so uh, could you please explain on those topic yeah see in today's time when you know people have also come out of the covid situation so uh, uh, you know vilas ji i would like to share that uh, what happens that when people go on the social media they show the best of the things the best of their life part right 
and when they meet you uh, then also they show the best of their lives but when they meet me they open up their dark secrets they open up the things which are hurting them uh their their you know points of depression their points of you know feeling low and sometimes you know people who seem to be the most happiest in the world they cry like a children like a small child in front of me so uh, people really have lot of loneliness depression and everybody has their own share of problems so uh, in this stressful times uh, vastu can be really very helpful uh, first of all i would say that uh, the houses should be clean uh, because you know from past two years people are working from home so the houses are really mess sometimes when i go to uh, you know vastu i have to hop in the basement like that much uh, you know stuff in the basement or in some of the bedrooms and closets are so much full so just lighter the home you know uh, whatever you have not uh, weared the clothes in past 5 years you won't be wearing it in another 5 years so it's better to donate those things which you are not using the first thing the second thing is always remove all the you know electronic items especially which we are not using because they also create a lot of stress in the house because all the machineries are not too much machineries are not good for human beings and now the science has also proved that our mobile phones you know radiate a lot which is not good for health and that's why people are having you know loss of memory and uh, you know short lived memory so uh, i would say that don't keep and especially broken machines should not be there in the house people keep 10 10 20 20 years old laptops with them that you know i have the stuff inside it then just download it and get rid of all those machines so i would say these are the two very doable things that everybody should you know do uh, to create the positivity in the home so yeah you uh, first point is very very important uh, uh, deepika ji as you mentioned uh, uh, cloths so uh, you are saying that uh, uh, five years is a uh, uh, when we use a five years after that we have to remove uh, so can you uh, can you elaborate on that topic yeah i'm saying that today see people especially children they don't wear right. those five years old clothes right every day the fashion is changing so uh, i just want to say that if you have not weared or if you have not used any of your you know footwears or clothes in past 5 years then you won't be using them in another 5 years also right because today the right. fashion changes so quickly and then what we do here in us like we keep on dumping the clothes we uh, bring big boxes and then we keep the clothes inside them and you know every year we don't even open those boxes every year right so i'm saying that don't stuff the house too much see when a uh, like a, you know uh, okay let's let me explain this through an example like a female in a marriage or uh, whether going to a function they wear lot of jewelry right and heavy sarees and everything but after 3 4 5 hours 6 hours they will get tired right then when they come back home they remove it the first thing they do is they remove the jewelry right similarly when we stuff the house too much even the house energies get depleted then the house also gets tired and it is unable to you know generate that positive energy so it is always good to keep the house clean don't keep the stuff which you are not using at all like when i go to uh, for the vastu the uh, garage and the basement is usually the thing sometimes they have stuffed so much their garage and basement that we don't have the space to go inside that or sometimes i have to hop that much stuff in the house and then they say that we have even not used it from past 5 years 10 years this closet i have not even checked from past 2 3 years so i'm saying don't do that stuff keep the house clean keep the house lighter to create that positive energy sure that's actually this is very very good information because yeah really uh, i'm admiring this information because we have many stuff in last 5 10 years because uh, memorable or whatever you can say the words uh, but we are not using but still we are keeping a uh, lot of um, i mean uh, cloths and uh, electronics and all the information if i it is not fixed in the in my room so we are keeping in the basement or we are keeping in the garages but you yeah. gave wonderful yeah. information yeah and uh, before going to the further questions uh, uh, deepika ji uh, could you please uh, i think you have a website right so uh, could you please repeat the website and how we can contact you uh, could you please guide to our srotas yeah listeners? so my website is uh, www.ohm hh.com 
it's a and my company name is om holistic healings where om is o h m so and then uh, if they want to um, want to talk to me they can go on my website and on the top right you can see book an appointment and you can book an appointment from there onwards there is a form just fill that form and submit that form and then the team will get back to you right yeah just i'm going to your website uh, deepika ji is a wonderful information i'm just uh, all services and courses are available yeah uh, it's a good information just i'm checking uh, meanwhile because I, I i how it works and everything so astrology all topics are there knowledge yeah. and everything everything so, is there she will ask you what i want to do is like you know people have so many notions people have so many myths attached to this sacred sciences of india and see our sages after doing you know lot of meditation after pleasing the god they have got this information and they wrote everything in the vedas what my motive is that you know why not to impart this positive energy education to each and everybody and why not we all get benefited by it in this times of you know when we are living in kalyug when we are in the stressful times then why not to give the right information and see these sciences whether astrology or vastu is made to make uh you know happy and a peaceful life for human beings it is not to you know make them scared or uh you know to make them uh, to put them into some kinds of myth so i just want that everybody should know what actually these sciences are which is really very very good yeah exactly so uh I'm going to ask you few more questions, Deepika ji, if you are comfortable. Sure. Uh, how much astrology and Vastu connected? And you know, uh, generally, uh, people keep so many things in house to decorate it, right? So outside decoration, inside decoration. So uh, these these will affect to the our uh, Vastu. So could you please elaborate on these topics? yeah see um uh, first of all vastu and astrology are deeply connected to each other astrology is mother of all the sciences like vastu numerology face reading so uh, astrology is the base so what astrology do it you know when we open a chart we only read about a particular one person but when we do vastu you know and we heal the house according to the vastu or we balance the house according to the vastu then everybody in that house gets benefited right so that is why you know uh, vastu works on a bigger level because once the vastu is done then it works for each and everybody and then uh, if we talk about the interior of the house see avoid putting anything like uh, you know like people put uh, only buddha faces only uh, lord ganesha's faces see in our culture not in our culture in throughout the world when we you know when the uh you know the upper part of the body gets disconnected from the lower part of the body then we consider that that body is dead right and then in whatever country you go they will according to their religion they will dispose of the body like in india we hindus we will burn the body the other might bury them so there are different ways but nobody will keep that body in the house right so and when we put this statues like just the head of the ganesha head of the buddha then that does not make sense see in house whatever we keep that creates a some or the other message on our subconscious level so never keep all these things and then people decorate the gods uh, pictures faces and especially the statues of uh, lord ganesha on the floor which is a very wrong activity because ganesh ji is the pratham poojniya dev he is the first worshiped lord and the lord is so so divine and so supreme how can we keep them on the floor it's not advisable so in that way we create the negative energies the second thing is never keep the things which are sharp which uh, which can create you know harm to the human body uh, just like swords you know i'm giving an example some kind of knives beautiful knives never decorate see who used to decorate this only the kings used to decorate this because uh, you know using the sword was their uh, dignity right and then kings used to suffer a lot like you know they never live a peaceful life they were always afraid that the neighbors could you know um, harm them can do some damage to them 
so when we keep all these sharp objects uh, then uh, you know we also live in some or the other kind of fear so always decorate the house with the beautiful things like the flowers the fresh flowers are good the paintings which have positive animals soft animals like peacock birds never keep the lion leopards we don't need aggressive energy in the house we need the house should be so calm and peaceful that when we come back to the house after a stressful day we should feel that peace inside the house right so avoid decorating the house with anything which can harm human body or which is aggressive in nature or which does not have any message uh, people usually decorate you know especially they keep the ganesha or something on their children's study table i say don't do this in fact put some positive messages keep on going uh the uh, the best days yet to come you can do this uh, so keep such messages that whenever you feel low you just read that message and automatically that energy floats in you so um, you know the interior of the house really plays a big role right uh thank you deepika ji but i have a question here so when your uh, decoration means i mean uh, i'm asking another way a uh, question yeah. yeah because the people will you know decoration right when when people are coming so empty walls are you know nothing i mean you can say like uh, uh, they're not uh, spending uh, money or something so uh, everyone uh, they keeping walls like some decorations but you're saying the other way uh it's not good or something so how it works because uh, uh, so it's a, it, do we need to take someone uh like uh, someone senior like you or uh, some vastu astrology person so can we go with that way or can we choose our own option so what do you uh, recommend here see i would say that yes uh, it is always better to consult a, a you know vastu specialist uh, so that you can have the best of the energies in the house but on the other hand if you do not want to do that then i would suggest that yes keep the soft things in the house avoid putting you know uh, the aggressive animals or the man eaters uh, pictures or statues in the house like people keep lion tigers leopards in the house avoid keeping that because we don't need those energies in the house the second is that never keep you know the sharp objects in the house that also creates negative energy then never keep anything which is broken like the you know cut face of shiva or the cut face of you know um lord ganesha buddha they should be definitely avoided and the fourth is that i have seen in many of the houses that people keep that sleeping buddha see we don't need buddha's energy that way because uh, you know the the buddha was a uh, born to do something here in the world to spread some message here in the world but we don't want our children to leave the house right we want a complete family so don't keep these things here and there they really disbalance the energy in the house and then they create you know negative impact in the house Right. Yeah, but most of the people, you know, laughing Buddha is like the symbol of feeling like laughing. So that's what more. I mean, I saw many houses uh, like laughing Buddha. But as per your suggestions, uh, it's uh, uh, not to keep. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, uh, see, laughing Buddha is actually not the Vastu concept. It is more of a Feng Shui concept, and Feng Shui right. is like. chinese uh, you know it is a kind of a chinese vastu shastra so what we guys are doing uh, you know we all put laughing buddhas also ganeshas also so uh, the house should be like a temple but not a temple right so when okay. we put lot of these energies then it gets disbalanced because god is supreme we should never use god's pictures statues to decorate the house they are not meant for the decoration um they should not be put as a decoration symbol there should be only one temple in the house and in there only the god's picture should be there it should not be here and there so thank you deepika ji uh thank you i mean i'm call i'm sorry i'm not calling dr deepika ji so conveying i'm a friendly i'm calling deepika ji but your name is dr deepika ji uh, all listeners so she is a doctorate so that's what i'm uh, as a i'm known very well known person so that's what i'm calling a simple deepika ji uh thank deepika ji uh, i hope it's yeah. okay sorry for that <laughs> yeah yeah it's perfectly okay perfectly okay no problem and uh, one more uh, question uh, deepika ji if someone does not have their horoscope uh, then how can they get their reading so uh, so what exactly horoscope is there 
Okay, so if somebody does not have the horoscope and they have a little bit idea of the time, then uh, you know I can rotate the time machine for them until and unless they say yes, each and every you know um, like event is matching. See, I usually say that everybody should get the reading done because today nobody has time to you know waste. Nobody has money to waste. Nobody has efforts to waste, right? So when you, uh, you know, get the readings done, then you come to know that, okay, this is the best time for me to do this and this thing. This time should be avoided. So, you know, the efforts, the money and everything is put in the right time at right place to get the right, you know, benefits. So uh, to avoid any kind of those chances in the life, I usually suggest that one should go for the horoscope reading. Thank you. That's a good information, actually. <clears throat> so uh, another relation to uh, however to Vastu for business and Vastu personal life, how, how it uh, uh, related to both Vastu, uh, business and personal life? See, if a person has their own business, then the Vastu can be done on the business place also in their office or whatever they have, like a shop, office, and the Vastu at home also. But if somebody is in the job, then we cannot do the Vastu of their office, right? So at that time, we only do at the house only and we enhance the zone of those areas. See, in business, you need clients, customers, and in the job, you have to complete your goals. You have to complete your targets. So it depends. There are different varieties of jobs also. Like, let's say, if it is a doctor, I would see more of the northeast, the northern side of the northeast. But if it is the job is something related to where you have to present something, you have to give your presentations, then I would enhance the southwest. So for each and every kind of job, there is a zone in the house. So at that time, uh, I usually, you know, uh, check out those zones and I balance them properly. Oh, that's good information. Uh, thank you, Deepika ji. And uh, <clears throat> numerology is the main uh, concept in Vastu, right? So what is numerology uh, and what is the origin of numbers? Uh, so differentiate on both uh, scenarios. See, uh, if I rate, then I'll rate like uh, if somebody has to go for astrology, Vastu and numerology. I would say, as I have said earlier, astrology is mother of all sciences. So uh, I would rate like if one has done the astrology, he's all, already 50% good. Then Vastu, another 45%. And then last 5% I give to numerology and other sciences. See, I have written my own book, The Numeroscope, uh, and uh, it is one of the very good uh, bestsellers. So, uh, but still, uh, my experience of past 20 years says that astrology and Vastu are the main sciences. Numerology is actually, you know, you balance the numbers according to the uh, birth date and the name vibrations. If somebody uh, is looking for, you know, open up some business or something, then uh, the name can be said, the company's name, the company's logo can be set according to the numerology. But still, if the astrology says that the dasha is going good, everything will be good. Then if the numerology is not done, still the person will be good. But if the horoscope says that right now the time is not good, so whatever you do, you know, that time usually give the hard time. Right. So is there any relate, relation to the past lives? Uh, I mean, so is there any, uh, I mean, you can say Purva Janma, these are the things will become, right? So is there any relation on those uh, concepts? Yes. Yes. See, uh, actually, uh, everything is based on the past birth. What is astrology? Astrology is actually the balance sheet of the past births. See, we have we used to do three type of karmas. So, uh, prarabd, drid karma, and the karma di karma. So, we all have to face all these three types of karmas. And the astrology, that horoscope is actually our balance sheet. That what we have done in the past births, and according to that, the how much the stars are ready to give us. And when we do the remedies through the astrology, then, you know, uh, it is something like, let's say, in the bank, we have, let's say, I'm just giving an example. We have $1,000, but we need $1,200. So through the astrology, that overdraft of $200, we do at that time. Because then we heal the stars. Then we, you know, pray to the stars. Sometimes we, 
uh, wear the stones sometimes we chant sometimes we you know uh, put something in the uh, flowing water and uh, sometimes we do yagya anushthan so all these are different kind of remedies like some planet might be needing a ring the other planet might be uh, needing a chanting so when we see the astrology horoscope we see less yes in the past birth this was done and this was not done so in this birth we have to face all those things and every relation here also is like you know uh like it's nothing you know it's all related to the past births only some relations give us so much happiness some give us so much pain so this is all related to the past birth astrology is actually the balance sheet of all the past births and then through exactly. the astrology horoscope we can also read what the person has done in the past birth correct exactly and if you know nine planets in our solar system and these nine uh, numbers right generally so yeah. all uh, this will come on the calculation so uh, so how it uh, uh, relation closely numbers and planets see uh, the nine as you said the nine planets are connected to the uh, these nine numbers only like number 1 is for sun number 2 is for moon number 3 is for jupiter number 4 is for rahu uh, number 5 is for mercury number 6 is for venus number 7 uh is for ketu number 8 is for saturn and number 9 is for mars so all the nine planets in the numerology have their own numbers and through these numbers we see like the date of birth is one number which is known as the personality and then we when we add up to the whole date of birth that's the destiny of the person so astrology is if we talk about the numbers then it is the numerology tells that yes the planets have these numbers and according to that we can see what kind of a nature the person has and how he is going to have the you know the coming life of the person through these numbers then we make a chart the low sugar chart and then we can suggest the remedies also if the person does not have time of birth then through numerology we can depict but still i'll say astrology is much much deeper than numerology this is what my experience says Yeah, that's what I mean. Just I want to because I, I'm asking these questions because uh, I mean, uh, it's like uh, all listeners can understand what is the relation with these numbers and uh, planets and everything. Just I want to go with uh, uh, more information. And uh, one more question: uh, uh, If the face reading is there, so how is the face reading uh, related to past, present, to future, and how it is helpful? again face reading is one of the baby sciences uh, and then the through the uh, you know uh, face reading also each and every line on the face tells a story each and every mole on the face tells a story see the shape of the eyes the shape of nose the shape of the face they all tell some or the other story so uh, like if the eyes are big then that person is usually very creative uh and then uh the lips also tell then the phildrum tells about the uh you know the love life of the person the cheeks tells about the bank balance of the person so uh, uh eyes are like creativity the forehead tells about how much the person can you know work hard to achieve the goals and then the eyebrows tell the spirituality of the person so you know all the aspects of the life can be uh can we can read through the face reading but in today's time uh, the face reading first of all it's a baby science and the second is it has so many you know uh, you know limitations because uh, people usually go through laser treatments right the original uh, eyebrow shape tells so many things like the as i said the spirituality of the person but today the ladies get their eyebrows done so each and every hair has a story to tell so that's why and then in the laser treatment people make their face clean so that is why also uh, today the face reading has much more limitations to it attached to it uh, deepika ji sorry for interruption uh, i got a call uh, added call so let's have a call and hey uh, uh, may know the name and uh, where are you from hi uh, i am vindhya and i am from melbourne hi vindhya yeah please Namaste, go ahead we have a uh, Yeah, please go ahead. So, yeah, uh, Namaste. Your uh, really interesting topic. It's a really interesting topic, and that's why I couldn't control myself. Deepika ji, well, fantastic explanation. And uh, thank you, thank you so much, Vindya ji. So I have a question. Like in astrology, we have the Jaimini Padati, the Krishna Murti Padati, and the Vedic. Yeah. So, um, what? 
you know it's always difficult to predict the longevity of a person so hmm. which exactly which method correctly predicts the longevity of a person which gives us the accurate prediction okay because See, in, first of all yeah yeah please mm-hmm. yeah because in krishna murti padati they say we need to look at the badakadipati and marakadipati uh, and uh, jemini has different set of calculations and sometimes when we calculate in different uh, paddhatis the different methods the ayurveda could be long or medium or short and it could differ in each procedure so that's why i'm asking this question yeah yeah see first of all uh, all these paddhatis you know uh, like they if we calculate the age according to them they will come to a same uh, solution only because god has written the date of birth and the death of the birth or death of the person right so uh, the mm-hmm. definitely if you pick any of the padati they will give you the same answer this is the first thing the second thing is we should leave something in the god's hand right like the teacher from mm-hmm. whom i have studied he told me that you will never use astrology for the two things first thing is that never predict the uh, you know death of a person because sometimes what mm-hmm. happens as i said that we all do three types of karmas so sometimes what happen when we do the remedies when we do uh, you know throughout the life when we uh, you know when we earn some good karmas then sometimes the god you know shift the age so whenever uh, and in the shiv puran it is written that uh, goddess parvati said that whosoever will uh, you know predict the age i am going to you know um, like i'm going to give them uh, that shrap that you know that astrologer will suffer a lot so my teacher told me never predict anybody's age because you never know when the god can be you know merciful on the other person the first thing and the second thing is like you know uh, in this age thing um, if you know astrology i can give you a little bit idea but never use yeah, it on yeah, anybody yeah. because see i received a call once from a person and like uh, he came to me after 10 years of that prediction he told me 10 years back my astrologer told me i'm going to die on that date and since past 10 years i'm living that fearful life so now see whatever 10 years he might have cried his wife has cried so that you know all those karmas will be a burden on the astrologer so that's why never predict anybody's age right i hope you got the point right and the second thing never use the astrology to you know um, like for the share market never use it because that is a kind of a jua it's called in sanskrit and the astrology is such a divine science that we should never use for all these wrong doings so never use the science for these two things okay thank you vindya so, ji uh, uh, do you have any any more questions uh, please go ahead just a quick to one more question like uh, i know that yeah. it's uh, you know uh, wrong to predict the age of a person who comes to us consulting to, uh, as a consultant but you know mm. sometimes when we see that there is a dosha like say the lagnadipati is in uh, maraka house or somewhere and we mm. need to tell them some remedies because it could indicate a short life or something uh, say uh-huh. that, like uh, not just on a basic uh, just based on lagnish or thing but in that if we analyze and if we see that the person is of a short span or a medium span we suggest some remedial measures right so in that case can we just we do, we shouldn't be telling it to them they saying you know i understand that we shouldn't tell them that your your ayurveda is short or medium or whatever but we can tell them remedial measures like you have uh, i think you have some um, you know problems in your life so you can do so much so remedies with your health or longevity or whatever so that in mm-hmm. that sense can we suggest any remedial measures to them like okay for that first thing let's see first of all as you said that the lagnati pati dosh so see when the uh, it is all myth we uh, see when the lagna goes into the second house or the seventh house then for the two hours the situation is going to the same so in all the people who are born on those uh, within those two hours then they will have a short span no see for the death always remember the 8th house will be active because 8th house is the house of death the second thing is i am telling according to the vedic when the person dies then what two things stops first of all uh, the karma of the person stops the karma accounts finishes right so the 10th house has to be afflicted the second is that the breathing get stop when the death comes so the lagna should be afflicted so the 1 8th and 10th house connection that should be seen in the death thing and 
for your practice as I can understand that you know astrology. Just pick the charts of the people uh, who uh, have left for their heavenly abode and then just see at what dasha they died, at what time period they died and then also check the gochar of that point. Now, if we come to the remedial part, see, only um, one god who was worshipped by the demons and the gods was Mahadev. Right? That's why he said Devo ke Dev Mahadev. Like he is the gods of the gods. And only he, he is the, you know, controller of the age. So, uh, Lord Shiva's chanting should be done. And the best is Mahamrityunja Mantra. And see, uh, if you know about the mythological story, so only the Venus, Shukracharya, after Lord Shiva, only the Shukracharya knew that uh, the, you know, crux of this... Uh, Mahamrityunja Mantra. So, uh, the Mahamrityunja Mantra should be done uh, for the age, for the longevity. That is the best. And uh, like uh, that should be done by the proper priest thing. If it is really the Dasha has, is being tough, then I would say that get it done in a very, very proper manner. This is the like I'm telling as a general remedy. Otherwise, we have to see what is the eighth Lord, what is the first Lord, what is the tenth Lord. So, we have to see all those things. But this is a journal remedy which I'm telling. Okay. Yeah. Right. Thank I you. hope Thank you, so you are satisfied with the answer. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Right. Thanks a lot. Thank Most you. welcome. Even the fantastic explanation, Divita Ji. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, Vindya ji. Thank you so much. Thanks for calling. And uh, yeah, uh, Dr. Deepika ji, yeah, it's a wonderful explanation. Really, uh, many questions are very uh, valid and uh, your explanation is awesome. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, uh, when we, uh, I have a, a few more questions. Uh, according to the, uh, so how, uh, what need to know about I give, one, I give and receive uh, I give and receive love or some relationship. How is the relationship relation? I mean, today relations are very, uh, very cold, right? And Vastu helpful on that? Yes, Vastu is very helpful on the relation point of view also. See, the Southwest in any house uh, is basically uh, like the relationship zone. Um, though we have for each and every relation, we have different zones. Let's say for the in-laws, it is eastern side of the southeast. Uh, for co-workers, it is like the western side. Uh, even for the cleaning lady we have at home is like the southern side of southwest. So, you know, uh, sometimes the people say that I don't get a good cleaning lady or something. It means that the southern side of the southwest is not that good or balanced. So, uh, in Vastu, we have, you know, a zone for each and every relationship, for each and every minor relationship. Sometimes people say, I'm not getting a good doctor. Uh, that doctor told me to go to that specialist. I went there, then they moved me to the another specialist, then to another specialist. So, sometimes people don't get the right, uh, you know, medication also. So, for that, check the northern side of northeast. So, for each and every relation, there is a zone. But on... Uh, if we talk about uh, as journal on whole, Southwest is the direction. If Southwest is balanced according to the Vasu, then uh, the people living in that house usually enjoy good relationship uh, with each and everybody and among them also. Thank you, Deepika ji. Uh, we have one more uh, one more listener. Uh, one more call. So let's have a call. Uh, namaste. Welcome to Telvina Radio. I know your name. Please. Hi, sir. I'm uh, uh, Srivalli from London. Hello, Deepika ji. Hello, hello. How are you? Yes, Go ahead. I'm good. Please. Thank you. Hope, hope the same with you. Yeah, thank you so much. I'm good. That's great. I just have a question. Personally, I really don't believe in all these things, uh, but my family does. So I have to do it forcefully. But one thing is, we have seen many changes in life according to their belief. That's what I personally think. Vasu gives them a like mental stability because they believe in it that's my thoughtful but that's why the vasu need a lot of constructional changes okay first of all vasu does not need need constructional changes see uh, if you have been listening the program since the starting i told that you know earlier days when the vasu was written it was like 
8000 years back and now iit khadakpur is introducing vastu in their sciences because it's about the uh, architectural theory right how we can uh, you know construct the things to get the maximum positive energy uh, how we can balance the energies of the house with the energies of the earth right on the base on the foundation level so uh, first of all uh, you know at that time the construction was easy at that time people used to make from the scratch it was not that you know a township is there and they have made the houses and then everybody is just uh, you know going to go over there and pick a house for themselves right people used yeah. to uh, make their own houses so that's why it is written according to the construction but today the time has changed a lot so for today uh, you know uh, the construction is not at all needed at least i don't you know guide or i don't give any kind of suggestions where the constructional changes are needed only we can just you know relocate the things we can uh, use lot of color therapy we can use lot of you know statues or something else or the stones in the house and we can finally uh, make the vastu perfect home so if you go to my website check out the reviews there or just write my name on google and check out the reviews there people have written that how much they have been benefited after using my suggestions in the vastu that's uh, great thank you one more question i have as you mentioned the place actually we have energy stored everywhere in the house some corner has an energy because of the sun some corner has the energy because of that for the reason but the person who believe purely in science how do you make them understand this vastu is equal to science but this is different than science how do you ju justify the answer for the ones who doesn't believe in vastu who purely believes in science okay so the person who believes totally in science see the earth has energy the earth has its own latitude and longitude right and then there is a line of equator right so the earth earth yes, revolves yes. on its own axis right so where we are living we are living on something which is continuously in action right so and then uh, the first thing the second point is that somewhere the soil is very fertile right and somewhere the soil is not fertile if the earth is made with the one thing only then everywhere it should be fertile but it is not like that right then above the equator line we have more of the you know a uh, colder region below the equator line it's more of the hotter region if the earth is made like that then it should be moderate on all the levels but it is not it means that the energy shifts it means that the energy has different phases on the different parts of the earth similarly when we we are constructing something above that let's say if it is a hot region then we don't need the slope on above the house but if it is a a uh, cold region then we need a slope right so similarly when we are constructing the house then we have to make it according to the shastras that okay this place is good for this but this is not good for this area like if i make too many windows in a house which is uh, you know uh, like if uh, in where the uh, temperature goes into the minus also then it is not advisable right so what is the logic behind all those sciences so similarly the vastu speaks that okay in the architecture if we design the windows like this we will have more of the sunlight right if the house is facing this way then we will have more of the sunlight if we put the things in this way or that way then that will bring more positive energy if the let's say if the kitchen is see in earlier days there was no electricity right Are you yeah. still there with us? Yeah. So in earlier days there was no electricity, and the ladies used to get up early in the morning, and they used to cook the food, and then they should also bath before cooking the food. This was the scenario in each and every Indian house. So if the kitchen will be in the eastern side, then only it is uh, then only it is doable for the ladies to you know get up early in the morning, and as the sun rises they can start cooking. right so if the kitchen will be in the west then they cannot start cooking early in the morning it would be tough for them so vastu is made on all those sciences that make the kitchen in the eastern side make the kitchen in the southeast because at that time it will be more warmth in the climate and everything so the ladies cooking food over there will be benefited by that got the point yeah yeah i do yeah. i do get the point like yeah so that like, is why uh understand yeah. this new modern generation kids who totally doesn't believe in all these uh things that was my question but even though we explain the same what we ex you explain to me that comes to them as a science uh, 
experimental thing rather than a vastu I, because i i have my own kids to make them understand that's the only reason don't no, no, but i'm not done with the answer let me finish let me finish see in today's world we have electricity right so the kitchen yeah. can be made in west yeah so exactly we yeah. cannot just run the way we cannot just you know make the things or uh, do like they were written in the olden days we have to change those things modify we have true. to change according to today's kids right and when the children they you know um, follow the advice or do and then they see the major changes in their life then they really feel happy and they start following it and see okay. the uh, these shastras are like our base our foundation right true. and yes when we follow them we definitely get benefited out of it yeah okay thank you i hope thank you are happy to dance yeah 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 i am ha- i'm so happy i have few more things to ask but i don't no go ahead to say wali if you have questions yeah you can go ahead Or okay then sorry one I more last we'll question yeah please please so we'll come continuous uh, uh, every weekend uh, we are requesting to come uh, our show, show show and yeah your last question you can go ahead uh, yeah last question is like husband and wife both if they get a house and horoscope is different for in, uh, every individual right yeah but while only the horoscope will be checked by husband like husband's horoscope only match when you buy a house how that is fair it is totally unfair to my knowledge <laughs> what do you say about this I don't do this thing. I never do this thing. I'm always on the lady's side. Ah, that's great. That's actually great. Because I was so I fighting more. I usually No, no, listen. I usually try to pick a house where the wife dominates the house. Absolutely. I'm just kidding. Not like that. See, first of all, when you pick the house, then there is a uh, you know, always see the basics of the vastu over there. Like the there should not be any toilet in the northeast of the house, the slope of the house towards the north and the east. Just take these two three points. Otherwise, okay. uh, uh, like this is no uh, I, at least i don't relate to this that only the husband's horoscope should be checked no today okay. the wives are also working there is no gungat system where the wives are sitting in the house putting the gungat no know, but the uh, wives so are also going out Deepika, so you have to still yeah. buy the same um, like same uh, the- theory no 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 at least i don't believe in this theory i usually say the c the what are the things which are basics of the vastu just check accordingly and pick the house and then no house is vastu perfect whether it's india whether it's england whether it's india so or us so we have to make it vastu perfect so then i guide regarding the colors and objects and other things to make it a uh, you know vastu perfect house wonderful thank you i'm so happy with the answers i'll go through the channel and uh... Thank you so much. Thank you. Very Thank much. you. Thank you. It was pleasure Thank talking you. to you. Ah, oh, lovely. Same here. Bye bye. Bye bye. Uh, thank you sevala ji thank you nice questions and uh, yeah thank you deepika ji for a wonderful explanation yeah i think it's uh, uh, actually we thought the 30 minutes but it's gone to <laughs> yeah and uh, uh, thank you and uh, uh, before closing our Uh, interview uh, final words uh, deepika ji and uh, uh, can you uh, explain your website one more time how we need to contact you uh, final words yeah so final words are like i would say that astrology and vastu are made to you know give us the maximum benefit in these times they are not to put us into any kind of superstitions they are science and uh, like there are many myths uh, uh, prevailing so just don't you know read here and there and do the vastu changes in the house always consult the best person and um, uh, my website is www. ohmhh.com and uh, the number is 732979280 uh, you can whatsapp me on this number or uh, you can go directly to my website and uh, book a slot over there thank you so mm-hmm. much and thank you vilas ji for giving me the you know uh, opportunity uh, to talk on telugu nri radio one of the most popular radio in the us uh, thank you so much deepika ji and uh, uh, a uh, vast to astrology many questions and more people uh, are familiar with these all things because everyone uh, feels like uh, uh, we want to follow the vast but they don't know exactly so uh, as a yeah. uh, experienced person like you so we need more uh, information because a uh, vast is not a uh, just uh, information it's a scientific information so it's a, a relation between both of that so and more questions will continue and uh, Uh, i'm requesting uh, please come to the radio and uh, please give more information to our uh, listeners and we'll keep in touch uh, with you guys
<clears throat> sure, sure. Whenever you want, I'll be there for Telugu NRI Radio. Sure, thank you, and uh, have a great day. Uh, hi, yeah, listeners. Uh, this is uh, I'm signing off. Last from New Jersey. Thank you.